So in example one, we're told that a puck of mass 0.2 kilograms is placed on a rough slope, inclined at 30 degrees above the horizontal, and the puck is hit so it moves directly up the slope. The coefficient of friction between the puck and the surface is 0.4. At part A, we've been asked to find the friction force acting on the puck. So we know that the maximum friction, F max, is a product of the coefficient of friction, mu, and R, which is the normal reaction between the puck and the surface. And we've been told that mu is given as 0.4. So we need to work out R, and this will act in this direction, perpendicular, going out from the surface. And we can work out this normal reaction by working out the force that passes through the surface, perpendicular to it. And this is the component of the weight, which is 0.2g. And we know that the angle between this perpendicular and this weight force will be the same as the angle of the slope. So we can work out this perpendicular force as 0.2g cos 30, because this contains the angle. So this force will be the same as a normal reaction. So now we can work out the maximum friction as a product of mu and r. We know g is 9.8 meters per second due to gravity. So the maximum friction will be 0.679 newtons. So then for part b, find the acceleration of the puck up the slope. So we know this maximum friction will be acting down the slope. And as the puck travels up the slope after being hit, the maximum friction will slow it down. But this weight will have another component that acts parallel and down the slope. This will be 0.2g sine 30. If you're not sure how to work out these two forces, you should check out the videos on my website. So as the puck travels up the slope, it's got this force and this force, the friction acting against it. So we know the net force, ma, will be 0.2g sine 30 plus the maximum friction. We know the mass is given in the question as 0.2 kilograms, so 0.2, and the acceleration will be negative because as the puck moves up the slope, it will be slowing down. So 0.2 times negative a, we can work out this force as 0.98, and we've already worked out the maximum friction. So to work out the acceleration, we'll divide both sides by negative 0.2. So A will be negative 8.3 meters per second squared. And then for part C, what will happen to the puck after it comes to rest in this case? So the puck will move up the slope, then it will stop, and will it come back down, or will the, fract or will the friction hold it in place? Well, We've got the 0.98, which is this force, trying to push it back down. Friction has now changed direction trying to try and stop it coming back down. So since the force acting down the plane, 0.98, is greater than the maximum friction, 0.679, the puck will slide back down the slope. Okay, so this is an example of how friction can change direction. Okay, so in example two, a rough slope is inclined at an angle of 25 degrees to the horizontal. A box of weight 80 newtons is on the slope. A rope is attached to the box and is parallel to the slope. The tension in the rope is of magnitude T newtons. The box is held in equilibrium by the rope and the coefficient of friction between the box and the slope is 0.32. Part A, we've been asked to find the maximum frictional force which can act on a box. So if you want to try this question yourself, you can pause the video and when you come back, we'll go through a work solution. Okay, so welcome back if you had a go. So we know the maximum friction is mu r. Mu is given as 0.32. And we can work out r, our diagram, is acting upwards perpendicular to the slope. And because it's not moving off the slope, it will be the same as the perpendicular down through the slope. And this will be the result of, or this will be a component of this weight. 
So we know this angle will be 25 degrees. So this force through the plane will be 80 cos 25. So this will be the same as our normal reaction. So F max then will be the product of mu and R. We can work this out on our calculators and we get 23.2 newtons. And then for part B, find the least possible tension in the rope to prevent the box from moving down the slope. So this weight will have another component acting parallel and down. So this will be 80 sine 25. So if we sketch a diagram of what's happening with this tension and this downward force, we want the least possible tension. So if we were to let go of this rope, it would have zero tension. And then the frictional force, as we let go of a rope, will try and stop the box from moving back down. So friction would act in this direction, up the slope. So now you can see that the tension and the friction are acting in the same direction. So we can say that the tension plus the maximum friction must equal the 33.8, because we're told that it's in equilibrium. And we know F max is 23.2, so the tension will be the difference between these two, and this is 10.6 newtons. Part C, find the greatest possible tension in the rope. So if we sketch a diagram again, so if we were to pull and pull on this rope just before it was to move and climb up the slope, friction would now be acting against it to try and stop it moving up. So now you can see that the tension is acting in the opposite direction to the friction and the downward force caused by weight. So we can say tension will be the sum of these two forces. Again, they must be equal because it's in equilibrium. We can substitute in our value for friction, F max. So the tension in the rope must be 57 newtons. Okay? Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did find that helpful, please like and subscribe. And you can download the full lesson and worksheet from my website, mrmathematics.com. There's a link in the description below. Thanks again and take care.